live from Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Cube at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back. We're here live in Boston, Massachusetts uh, for HP Big Data Conference. the Cube, our flagship program. We go out through the events and check the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host this segment, Chris Selland, who's the VP of Marketing and Biz Dev at HP. Chris, welcome to the co-host. Uh, going back to the analyst days uh, yeah, when you were an analyst. Yeah, great to be here, given how long <laughs> we've worked together, no problem. I um, like sitting in the seat. Les Bonnie, COO of Click, uh, is here. Um, great, I know about your company, one from one, Rick Jackson, who you hired, yes. ex-VMware CMO, and also uh, the relationship news with Vertica. So, um, Chris, tell us. What's the partnership about? What's, what do you guys, uh, what's the big Vertica Click story? Um, well, you know, I'll just say Click is a very important, great partner of ours. We've been working together for a number of years. We use the product internally at HP. There was a demo done earlier in the conference, a uh, whole session actually discussing how we use it for sales analytics and pipeline analytics. And um, there's a lot of new stuff that Click's got coming out and we're really excited about it. It's really going to deepen the relationship. It's going to really extend the level of integration. It's going to bring a lot of joint value to our joint customers and we really expect our joint customer base to grow dramatically because of that. So, really excited to have Les here. So first question, what's it like working with Rick Jackson? <laughs> well, as a, he's, a, he's a gentleman, he's very pleasant to work with him, but uh, I, think, I think that would be confined to the bar if it wasn't just, if it was just that. I mm -hmm. think our collaboration with the uh, with Hewlett Packard yeah. and, and HP Vertica particularly is, is a very rewarding one, so yeah. I think it's happy socially, happy business. I want to get the Rick Jackson plug, I know he's going to watch yeah. it, so I'll get in. Hi Rick, how are you? <laughs> um, so, so talk about the business, where are you guys at? Talk about, talk about your product, I mean self-service, uh, data intelligence, all kind of converging, you know. Yes. Tableau set the table on visualization. Analytics yeah. and visualization are the killer apps right now on everyone's plate, so Indeed. what are you guys doing in that area? Well, we've been around for some some time now, of course, and I think we, we, we definitely pioneered the, the market of, of business discovery, as we call it, Gartner call it data discovery, and, um, and pioneered the, the democratization of, of business intelligence and to ensure that people, normal people, like perhaps you and I, John, can, yeah. can actually drive an analytics. You, not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In order that we can actually get results from perhaps very complex data environments. So, We've, we've taken that approach to say, how can we simplify analytics so normal people can use it? Mm. You know, we were having a conversation earlier and there was a kind of a joke we overheard, um, and someone said, what's the difference between a statistician and a data scientist, and the answer is salary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I got some flame mail on Twitter, that's, ir that's irresponsible to say that, mm. and then I just said, well, everyone's changing their title from statistician to data scientist, mm -hmm. and then the, the flame came back in again saying, mm. yeah, that's a pet peeve, because you can't just fake it as a, in certain different levels, it's just, projects will fail if you, yes. so what's your take on all that? What it means is people want to be data scientists. Well, um, well, and so is it easy or hard? What's your take? Well, I, th I think this is being driven by some sort of global trends in business, really. I think organizations now, to be a, a modern, relevant organization, need to empower their, their employees to, to become more comfortable with using data and getting insight into, into the data that's, as, as we know, being produced by, by uh, leaps and bounds from a volume point of view. And uh, to drive this sort of agility of modern enterprises, we believe data is at the core of this and empowering normal people to use their data in a much more constructive way. Yeah, we've had some pretty good interviews, Chris, here mm -hmm. with some of your uh, keynote speakers. Obviously, um, the United States Postal Service really here yeah. Being competitive, trying to compete with the Amazons, the UPSs, the FedExes, and also we had Tom Davenport, who's about to go on stage, talking about competitive strategy, process right. improvement, all that's changing. So, Chris, I mean, was it a method to your madness with these selections? <laughs> or is it all convectoring with discovery? No, well, I mean, it's certainly, we have a lot of new breed businesses, but also a lot of businesses that have been around for a long time, very much including HP, as I mentioned earlier. You know, we use Click mm -hmm. internally. Um, we, uh, you know, we're a 75-year-old company, right? So the grounds of business, whether you're an old business and new business, are really changing, and also globally. You know, one of the things we really like working 
really like about working with Click is the fact they're a global organization. So they've really got a footprint that, you know, a lot of technology obviously tends to be, you know, Silicon Valley centric, US centric, North America centric, but this is truly going global and Click is a global company and a global partner and obviously HP is a global company as well. So, so it's a great partnership that really extends worldwide. So Les, I got to ask you the tough questions now. So, sure. the, so the real tough question is two things that drive uh, validation in the market for, the, for the, uh, the, your, the, your customers. Data sources and uh, industries. How are you guys handling the plethora of sources, one, and two, cross industries? Because there seems to be people just going in and saying, I'm going to own the vertical. Yeah. And have especially, so can you guys, what's your, what's your strategy there? Are you a multi-industry uh, player yes, we're, and we're, data sources? We're, we're definitely data agnostic. We don't mind where data is from, what source it is. In fact, uh, the, I think the major, a major strength of our product set is our, our ability to aggregate and deal with multiple data sources and, and mash these together on, on the fly. So this very, very powerfully uh, uh, supports the notion of being able to gain insight into into your business or into yeah. your data, because you can't really dictate yeah, yeah. Where, the, where the data is or what source it may be in. And, and, and that's it could what be, and the sources well. could change overnight, literally, oh, right? Com completely, or, or be, in, be invented overnight, because I think in the, particularly as we're moving forward, I think people have the, you know, the Excel spreadsheet in their bottom drawer, and they'd love to be able to combine that with their Salesforce data and their SAP data, and that's what we do so well. Mm -hmm. So Chris, I want you to take your HP hat off for a second, put your analyst hat on. Oh, come on. How would you categorize these guys? And, and don't use the magic quadrant, try maybe make up some <laughs> a new metric, or or a wave or a quadrant or uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you want. How would you, as an analyst, look at these guys and compare them to others? Um, I would say, you know, uh, an excellent product. As I said, we use it. Um, a company that's got a global view, global footprint. They've got a tremendous partner network, which is another real differentiator as well. I mean, as you know, we have a very broad ecosystem. We try to work across the board with all of the major BI visualization platforms because it's all about customer success, and we have to. But we really appreciate our partners, and Click is certainly a partner that, as I said, from a, you know, first of all, just excellent product, and they've got some new products coming out, which I'll let less talk about more than myself uh, over the next few months. I think mm -hmm. something they've just released. And um, you know, great product, global footprint, great partner network, yeah, well yeah. established, they've been around for a while. Um, so this is, you know, it's a, it's a really important partnership to us. Well, so but, I perhaps I'll just add to that. I think, I think is one thing if, is that we do, do well, or we believe, is that, is that individuals and organizations, they, they go on a journey with analytics. It's not, it's not a point in time. They start often mm -hmm. with very simple use cases. Then the human nature is one of wanting to be of inquisitive, wanting to ask the next question, to, to push the boundaries of what they know. And we feel very strongly that, that a product has got to be easy to adopt and easy to use for often in the early stages of very simple use cases, but you also got to have a product that can hold the hand of the user or the business and take them to a, to a journey for very complex analytics. And, and, and all these use cases exist at the same time in It's like putting a child through college, right, or school. You oh. get them into kindergarten, you grow them up. Or, and, or, or indeed learning yeah. a language. Yeah. Yeah. You can start with having a very small vocabulary and point and grunt to buy a piece of bread, but if you want to write poetry or technical <laughs> authorship, you, the, the language needs to grow with you, and we think a product like, like Click does that, allows the simple, simple use case to be supported by people who are not it's IT easy literate. To get in, it's easy to get into. Absolutely. And you can grow with it. Very sticky, so fun okay. to use, intuitive, gets you to value very quickly, and then you want to more, you want to express more and have a more robust, complex analytics conversation with your data, then the product can support you as well. So it takes you on the journey <laughs> to, to a very high level of, of analytics confidence. We're here live in Boston, the people are rolling in for the keynote with Tom Davenport, who we just interviewed earlier, you can go to Silicon Angle TV and see that. Uh, Les, I'm really intrigued, first of all, I think this is a smart strategy, mm. this idea of getting someone in and growing in as growth markets, mm. embryonic still, we were talking with Chris earlier about that, uh, but I got to ask you this, data discovery, business discovery is a really interesting concept. So I want you to give uh, the audience a 101. Give us a data discovery 101. What is it? What does it mean well, and what is data discovery? Well, it's often, it's often, I think it's very difficult to describe in, in actual terms, but if I can draw some analogies between, between it, the individual and how individuals process information is very subject and very personalized. And how pe and different people view data in different ways. So the, the, the idea is to provide 
a capability, a technical capability that gets away out of the way of ind the individual's capacity to hypothesize about certain data and the scent data often provides and say, well, where do I go next with my next question? I, we believe that we're, actually when people look at data, they often don't they often may have a, the initial engagement with it with a question in mind, but the minute you look at the data, then they say, well, I, actually, I didn't expect Jill to be a poor salesperson. What's happening here? And so then you go, it, can go it, off. So, so that's the discovery. It's the serendipitous dis dis discovery of insight into your data. Okay, so let me just kind of parse this a little bit. Yeah. So I'm going a little slow here on this late in the day. But So is it data discovery of the insight from the data, or is it data discovery from what data is available to act on? So No, it's, to, it's insight into the data. Okay. And, and the ability to, to mash data together from multiple sources, therefore expanding yeah. the horizon of insights. So Stonebreaker's new product mm -hmm. goes out and does a sprawl and crawl right. and figures out what's out there to work with. This mm. is not something like that, not, right? No, no not like that. This is really the ability to be able for, for an individual to be able to, say, uh, jump into their data and swim ar around okay. in their data in any direction they like. They're not pre-constrained by somebody else's okay. view of what, what questions are going to be asked. So it lets people asked. wrangle data, is that what I, what I hear you saying, right? That must be an American term, <laughs> wrangle data. Is that like a cowboy thing? Well, and John, I think, I think to your question <laughs> before, you data. Oh, know, right. the, the real difference between a statistician and a data scientist is what a data scientist should be also do. A statistician can tell you sort of what the data says, but I think a data scientist, a good one, should really be telling you what, what we should do, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and start to make suggestions, and as Les was just alluding to, look forward, you know, take, take, yes. take the meaning and, make suggestions, and it might not be make the final decision, but certainly make suggestions on forward direction. Uh, thanks so. for coming on theCUBE. We got the keynote coming up. We got the great uh, Tom Davenport up there. It's Click with a Q, Q-L-I-K. Check them out. Les, uh, Chief Operating Officer, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. My Cube. pleasure, John. Thank uh, you We are much. here live in Boston for the HP Big Data Conference. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this break, and we'll have the keynote up shortly.